wasn't the government in exile, it was the legal government of the Polish Republic. A clause in the Constitution ruled that in an emergency, a president could name his successor. The last president of pre-war Poland, Moschitski, was able to name his successor, Leczkiewicz, under whom the exile government began to function with General Sikorski as both prime minister and commander-in-chief. It was recognized by the British and the American governments and for two years by the Soviet Union as the legal Polish government. The Home Army in Poland and Polish forces abroad took orders from the commander-in-chief in London. After 19 45, the British government recognized the communist-led government in Warsaw. The wartime government became stranded in London. It did have a large exiled constituency, hundreds of thousands of Poles living abroad. There was a sort of a parliament, national council. There were ministries, a rudimentary taxation system. There was the Polish Educational Association, which had a network of schools. There was the Polish University abroad, newspapers, press, all the uh, organizations of a self-sustaining community. When Poland resurfaced in the news with solidarity in 1980, the government in exile found a new role of supporting solidarity, talking about solidarity in the Western press, uh, collecting aid for, for Poland. I think that's the time when people in Poland began to um, realize that there was, after all, something called the Polish government abroad, because in communist times, of course, the existence of a government in exile was suppressed. When Lech Wałęsa was elected as the first democratic president of Poland after the war in December 1990, he was presented by the last president of the government in exile, Ryszard Kaczorowski, with all the presidential insignia of the pre-war republic, which had been taken from Poland in 1939, held in Paris and London. Government in exile was the legal link between the pre-war government and the third republic of Poland, which emerged in, in 1989.